old shoe and a woman i'm sure where a man could lay down on his low down thoughts um a couple things just to make my way to my motherland if you will uh one uh theory just theory i do a lot of thinking that children's brains in my theory of anthropology and white culture are like Adam and Eve completely out of place in all of the imaginary realms where they're often taken to go in all of education and media and to prepare them for a life where they're actually the subconscious the fundamental language of our subconscious is constantly out of place kind of like how anyone would feel if a professional psychopath just started coming up to you and lying to you because what is gaslighting actually i thought to myself in this kind of interesting white terminology <laughs> interesting look it up but really what it is is lying it's just telling you the effects and some of the dynamics of involved in lying to someone involves all the different ways that human beings can as dupes or just completely compatible organs in the way groups of white people always are because in the way the groups of white people are always in some sense poisoned with lying in a way that they themselves in a majority don't have to suffer from and when terrorists are born there are people who like suffer from it and they want the majority to suffer from what they feel the majority has done to them and that's wrong but it's also right <laughs> it's right to feel that way it's not right to be violent about it. it is this unfortunately vile this not violence the vileness that comes to human beings which is lying gaslighting is lying okay people lie for lots of reasons people learn to lie for lots of reasons people may need to lie to you one day and anyone who's gaslighting to you is lying in a particular way and lying in some situations gives people leverage so they can lie and lie and lie and if the trap is being pulled enough around you or needs to be because behold if you're in a realm of lies and it doesn't like you the lies start to build like flesh on the side of a uterus giving birth to a demon because humans, believe it or not, in groups, behave like female reproductive organs. They give birth to things. In a sense, it's a strange sort of way. It's how the language of the sacred language of the subconscious and the mother tongue has been bound and enslaved over time to be the means and instrument of war itself. But that's, that's like the horror of Babylon. It's not really fair to the ladies, but it needs to be examined. So please put your legs in the stirrups and <laughs> lay back. Okay, that's enough. But anyway, uh, lying gives people leverage. And then if you're being lied to a lot in an environment that's already filled with lies because you're not as filled with lies as they are, and you serve as a kind of surrogate waste pipe in a way that people with lie build up tension. It's to deal with all kinds of tension. And groups multiply the ability to deal with this tension. But then it also builds up a lot of tension because the tension isn't being properly resolved. And it's building up, okay? Just like a drug addiction. So lies of different orders in the body and the mind of a culture. Okay, so the liar, let's say the liar of the group or the liar you happen to talk to inside some kind of group uh, cult mentality that's unhappy with you <laughs> for some reason. Um, only one person might be, but then suddenly everybody is. So in a way they speak for the subconscious of the group. And this is a way that violence comes over victims within groups because they are even speaking to a level that many people in the group are not in, in, uh, individual enough not to essentially give themselves to speaking on behalf of and reinforcing that their own physical body language, that of the substrates of their own need for survival, that they share, among other things, with the entire group and all of its laudable aspirations for humanity and God. So you really are being treated like a scapegoat, like a complete turd. It's awful to think how many people have, as children and adults, gone into places where they are treated to the worst and darkest side of the human immune system and the reasons that people have ever had the same organs to burn, molest, and torture innocent people and witches and children and homosexuals. I mean, and we're not supposed to be afraid of that. If you go to a white mental health unit, they'll say, that's just because of saber-toothed tigers. It's the language of evolution speaking to you. And we are speaking to you like a vagina filled with evolution and wisdom at the same time with every word we breathe. I don't know why anyone finds it difficult to know exactly how you should think about that especially if they really know what empathy is <laughs> and gaslighting as it turns out because people can gaslight just as an effect of how they've learned to behave and relative to how someone else is among them who simply hasn't learned that language even though they speak the same language english 
English has many languages and many ways of lying. The Inuit have a hundred words for snow. We have every word in our language to serve the priority purpose of lying, the way everything in the world ever served a priority purpose to a giant war effort against aliens from outer space and or our children, whose brains are always supposed to be out of place wherever they go, just like Adam and Eve. It's the language of being out of place, right? Is it, and that, as I said, the language of life, which is really the constant victory over death every instant. And in the Bible, the comparative language of life and the victory over death, because Christ compares himself as a language and a truth and a way of life and a God, and the language, and the God of a language and the language of that God as a constant victory and the only victory over death. And yet all of life and all of the language of the subconscious is a victory over death. So what is this son of man, this language, this heroic language, this victory over death? It involves killing himself every year and has the most, is it a natural language? It seems to me the Bible and Jesus is the most unnatural language there is. It's as unnatural as you could be, let alone supernatural, right? So those are my thoughts on that. Just to supplement my other thoughts on other things. And that's a human eyeball with an alien that has twice as many eyes as it does. If you put them together, they have three.